Welcome guys. Yeah, so in this video, uh, let's talk about the proof of the proof of the RPTO rule. Okay, so most of the people uh, like to use the RPTO rule in the calculus and they use a lot and uh, use 100 times. But actually, uh, most of people don't understand the proof. And the most of the proof in the undergraduate, uh, in, the, in the, the first year is not 100% uh, correct. Yeah, so the RPTO rule is very, it's not so trivial. Yeah, so you need to use the mean value theorem to prove it. So let's, let me just uh, give the uh, video for it. Okay, so what we need to prove is this kind of RPTO rule version. And uh, in, an, uh, in the next, uh, I will tell you that uh, in the future that I will tell you that RPTO rule only works for the one dimension. So let's say F and G is um, uh, AB into R. So let's say R to R, real number to real number. And let's suppose that we have this. Suppose that we have this. And uh, or uh, we have this. Suppose or the limit goes to infinity. Uh, so this can be plus or infinity. And at least it must be plus or infinity. So plus or minus infinity. If we have one or its case, so or. And uh, then. It means x go to a, f of x divided by g of x is the limit x of a, a prime of x, g of prime of x, if, uh, if this exists, if this exists. Okay, so this is Lapito. So the condition should say that uh, uh, f and g are uh, continuous on, let's say, uh, cd, which A belongs to C, D, close interval, sorry. And the F, G is a differentiable on C, D. And uh, one of these is true. So basically zero over zero, or infinity over infinity or infinity over minus infinity or minus infinity over infinity. And uh, the limits, uh, if this exists, if this exists, then the limit will be the same, okay? Okay, so uh, let's do some trick to shorten down the shorten down the proof scope. Okay, so the the preprocessing. Okay, preprocessing. So in order to prove this, uh, since it's a right, so a is not important, right? We can shift. Okay, so first, so the first step I want to say is that uh, I can shift. I can prove. I can without lots of generosity assume uh, a is zero. Okay, if this is not a case, then I just let u to equals x minus a and then do the change of variable. Okay, so I can shift a to be zero. Okay, so that uh, x can be, and uh, I just need to prove that uh, x uh, a equals zero case because I can shift a, okay? And then not only that, I can shift, I can shift uh, x equals to zero plus, okay? The reason is that if x is zero minus, if x approaches zero minus, I just add x equals to minus x. <clears throat> oh, then uh, one can prove it. Just do a change, still do a change of variable. And the third case is that I can show that uh, one can use these. One can only prove one, and uh, it will directly imply two. Okay. So the reason is that uh, if x, oh by the way, uh, let me just write. So if 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 your case is that, uh, so in, in this case that I didn't say A is finite, right? Okay? So if, if in your case that X goes to, uh, your A goes to infinity, basically or X approach to infinity, then you can let U equals to one minus X and uh, your limit X goes to infinity F or X, G of X become uh, U goes to zero plus F one over U, G one over U. And then by the theorem, you can use La Pito, right? So this is, this and then you do a derivative. You see these two cancel, right? So this is still a uh, limit x goes to infinity a prime of x, g prime of x, right? So now uh, a now if it's infinity, right? I can shift it into zero. So I can shift it into zero, and uh, by the two I can shift it to zero plus. Okay. So that means uh we can let, we can just let a equal to zero plus. So I can just approach right to the 
origin. Okay, so this is the first reduction. Okay, so the second induction is that, uh, oh, by the way, if X is minus infinity, then you just let U to be one divided by X, then you reduce to this case, okay? Okay, and uh, so second step is that I want to reduce the case when uh, both are F, R, G, R, infinity. Right, and say this is uh, this is just simple, right? So suppose f divided by g is like infinity divided by infinity plus or minus, then the I, you can apply f to minus f or g to minus g. Then it will make so you can now you can focus on f divided by g only be infinity over infinity, right? And you just uh, shift, it. you just change it to one divided by f, one divided by g and uh, take the inverse, right? Now it becomes zero divided by zero, right? So this is just G, F. You're just working on the G divided by F, right? Now you can write it as zero divided by zero. So all we need is to prove if now uh, I can, reduct after the sixth step, I just say that one can just redo, reprove, prove this. Okay. So this is the final thing is that, uh, so let me just write down. So I need to assume F and G is continuous on uh, zero B where B is some greater number greater than zero and the F and G are, uh, both differentiable on a zero B and uh, if and uh, F zero plus, sorry, F of X, G of X approach zero as X approach to zero plus. So both are zeros. So zero divided by zero. And if lim this limb is this, then they are the same, right? So this is a Lapito rule. So I, I make a reduction to the whole Lapito rule into this zero divided by zero and only approach to zero plus case. Okay, so, so let's just prove this. So, uh, so this is the condition. Okay, so let me just first write down the wrong proof. So wrong proof. So I should not, I, I would not say it's totally wrong, but uh, it's just uh, a little bit, uh, this is like the, on the first year baby version. Okay, so some people will say that Beto rule is trivial because if this is the case, if x approaches zero plus, then I can say that, oh, sure, right? I can write as this. At uh, least it's true, right? Because this guy's zero, this guy's zero. So an x close, and the x will approach to z plus. So x will never be zero. So these two should be the same, right? And the least limit is this, the least limit is this by definition. So this will be this. Uh, the, this will be this, right? Because both are limit is this. So you can try to use this, right? And then you, then you say, oh, it's trivial, right? Okay, so it's somehow like we proof, we just proof. But the problem is that, uh, let's try to write down, problem. This, this problem is correct. This step is correct. This is correct, right? Because limit exists. So you can do this since three prime is down zero. But now this is the question, uh, question step. So remember, I only say that uh, F and G prime are differentiable on zero B. I didn't say that F and G prime are continuous. So, sorry, now I prime. I say only say that, so I only say that F, so I, I only have F and G differentiable on zero B, on zero B. I don't say, I don't say F and G F and prime G prime are continuous. So they are only, F and G are only differentiable on zero B, not continuous at zero B. So if you use this, you need to assume that they are continuous. So if they are continuous, sure, you can do this. They are differentiable and continuous, then you can do this. So this proof is not 100% correct because you need more assumption to pull this step. Okay, so what is the 100% proof? What is the 100%? Okay, so remember that we have mean value theorem, right? So remember the mean value theorem we have, suppose you have a, b, and the same condition that f, g is continuous on closed interval a, b, and they are differentiable on an open interval a, b, then there exists the c belongs to 
A and B, such as F B minus F of A, G prime of C is the same as G of B minus G of A, F prime of C. Right, this is the mean value theorem that I proved in my previous video. You can click the list and go back to C. And I will post a link below if you want to see the proof. This is the code of Cauchy's mean value theorem. So this we just prove, so we need to use it, okay? So now consider h of x is uh, f of x, g of b, and the g of x, f of b. And uh, that's, uh, that's the h of zero, zero, right? Because f is zero, and the uh, h of b will be the same, right? So by Rose theorem, uh, there is exist a point which the differentiation is zero, right? So there exists a C in uh, zero B such that uh, H prime of C is zero. Basically, we are just proving the mean value zero again, but we use the same merits, the same technique we use to prove it. Okay, so H prime of X will be H prime of X, G of B minus G of B, Uh, sorry, G prime of X, F of B. Uh, right, yeah, so minus G prime of X, F of B. Okay, so H prime of C is F prime of C, G of B minus G prime of C, F of B is zero, right? So this tell you that uh, F prime over divide, F prime of C divided by G prime of C, is f of b divided by g of b, right? For any for exist c belongs to zero b. Okay, so now it's very trivial. So let b goes to z plus. So when b shrinks to zero, the only way that c must shrink to zero, right? So c must shrink to zero. So we just prove that limit b goes to zero f of b g of b will be limit c goes to zero plus plus the prime of c, g prime of c. And uh, this is, these are dummy variable, right? This c and b are dummy variable because right hand side only has c, left hand side only have b. And so change both to x. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't have pay. I didn't have page to write, yeah. But let me just, uh, let me just uh, attach to. Okay, so change, change the dummy notation, b to x, c to x. So we just prove it limit x go to zero plus f of x, g of x is the same as limit x go to zero plus a prime of x, g prime of x, provided this exists. Because when this exists, one can just shrink. So if you assume that g prime of x, that g prime of zero plus is non zero, then you're going to, uh, if, if you assume that the g prime is non zero, for the case, for the region that you approach, then it's fine. So this is the, 100% correct, rigorous proof of Lapito by doing a step-by-step -step proof. And then we can we uh, consider all the case. Okay, uh, yeah, so we finished the differentiation. Hope you guys uh, like this video.